Hi, this is Tim. And today we're gonna to do a quick how-to on how a motor actually rotates. And I mainly wanted to do this leading up to some single phase to three phase converter videos that we're doing. But since I'm already set up for this, I wanted to explain a little about how a motor actually rotates. So we're gonna start with our single phase over here. And I've kind of laid out how a single phase motor works. Uh, here's your AC power and it goes through these windings and just a little close up of it. This is kind of what the windings in a motor look like. So you have all these various poles. Now this isn't actually a motor. This is a little generator thing. Kind of makes a cute little twinkly light. But I bought it mainly because I could show kind of what these poles look like inside. So you have your run winding on this, and so that gets AC power. Now this could be 120 volt, or it could be 220 volt, at least here in the US. Uh, that's your two most common voltages. But it'll take power, and it goes around one of those windings. Then it goes to a winding 180 degrees across from it, and wraps around again, and then comes back to the AC. And that is your run circuit. On that, you're gonna get an AC sine wave. And if this is your zero line, then you're gonna be seeing a sine wave that looks like this. It's gonna go plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. And it's gonna do this at 60 Hertz or 60 cycles per second. And what that's gonna do is it's going to make these poles bounce back and forth between positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, just like a tug of war. So it's not going to actually get anywhere. It's just going to tug back and forth. And that's where the start winding comes in. So inside a motor, what they do is they have a second winding that is rotated 90 degrees from your run winding. And so it takes power from one of your AC legs comes over, wraps around, then exactly the same, it's gonna come 180 degrees around, wraps around again, then it's gonna go through a start switch. Usually this will be a centrifugal switch that's closed when the motor is not running. And once it gets up to speed, it'll open. And then it's gonna go through this capacitor. And I'm not gonna get deep into how this works, but mainly this is gonna shift the sine wave on the secondary. So it's gonna look something like this. So you have this one doing positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and you have this one doing positive, negative. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make a rotating magnetic field. And that is how it's gonna get the motor started. Now, once the motor is rolling, then this tug of war actually will keep that motor spinning. Now, one thing I've struggled with, and I think most people who try to describe this struggle with, is how do you take these squiggly lines and really show how this rotating field is working? I can't take credit for this, but this comes from a YouTuber called Electroboom. And so here's the same diagram that we have on the board. And if you imagine that towards the paper is south and away from the paper is north, then this field is doing this, something like this right here all the time. So it's constantly rotating that and those positive and negatives are gonna grab a hold of that rotor and turn it. So there is no physical connection between the windings and the squirrel cage, which the shaft is connected to. It is simply this magnetic field sitting here rotating. Also, the number one thing you always hear about about a single phase motor being bad, it's always the starting capacitor has gone out. And what happens when that happens is you go back to this thing just jumping back and forth. And usually you can actually see that on the shaft. You'll see the shaft just kind of sitting there, kind of vibrating back and forth. And that is wise because it doesn't have this extra winding here to help it get rotating. So now let's talk about three phase power. And mainly, how does it automatically manage to rotate without these capacitors. It's very similar to our single phase, only with three phase, you have three lines coming in. A, B, and C usually could be X, Y, Z. Now this can be very location dependent as far as what voltage is on these, but you're gonna have two main voltages on these. It's either gonna be 277 
on each leg. When you check between A and B will be 480 volts or it'll be 120 on each leg. And that's typically 240 volt. Now there's other variations. Some of these have a 208 high leg, a 240 volt high leg. There's all types of different ones. So it's gonna be very location dependent. But mainly you have three separate lines of AC coming in here. And very similar to over here though, the A coil is gonna come and it's gonna wrap around one of these windings. And it's gonna be very similar to the windings you see right here, same deal. But it's gonna wrap around it and then it's gonna come over 180 degrees across, wrap around again, and then it's gonna come over here. Your B winding is going to be 120 degrees offset one direction from this A winding. It's gonna wrap around go around 180, wrap around again, come over. And then finally your C winding is gonna wrap around, come around 180, wrap around again, come back over. And then on this type of connection, they are all, one side of all of them are going to tie together and the other side is going to go to your main power. So then when you power it, again, here's our zero line. We have phase A which is gonna be a sine wave. Then you have phase B, and this is gonna be 120 degrees out of alignment with phase A. And then you're gonna have phase C, and it's gonna be an additional 120 degrees out. And this, by being 120 degrees out, is making a rotating magnetic field. Now again, this is one that's really hard to follow all these squiggly lines here and try to understand that. But just think of it as your magnetic field towards the paper being south and away from the paper being north. And it's sitting there rotating like this all the time. And if you think about it, if I can get my hands in the right locations, I'll tell you right now, this would be our green is at the peak of its sine wave then our red is kind of coming down, our blue is near the bottom, which is kind of the exact same thing as you're seeing over there. And that is what this field is doing all the time. And so this, again, pulls on that squirrel cage and causes it to rotate. Now again, this isn't a motor class. Uh, mainly, I want you to know enough about how a motor rotates so you can understand how to troubleshoot it when it's not rotating. And that's where we're gonna kind of start going through is what happens to a motor when it doesn't have a starting capacitor or what happens to a three-phase motor when it loses a leg. Things like that, that you're gonna run into out in the field. Hope this video has been helpful. Thank you to our patron supporters who made these videos possible. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.